All right, we are broadcasting live, gentlemen. I want to welcome everybody to the Monday Q&A. Every Monday at 9 p.m., join a few Dent guys as we discuss all types of things. This time around, uh, for we plug ourselves, we have Christian from Five Star Dent Removal. Out of Michigan, gone. right? Yep, Michigan. All right, cool, cool, cool. You want to give them a little spill? Where they can find you, where you're at in social media, all that good stuff? Yeah, um, basically, uh, website is uh, fivestardentremoval.com. And uh, we, you know, we have Instagram uh, at Five Star Dent and uh, Facebook and Twitter as well. Basically, the same, the same handle. Good, good. Uh, Ryan, you want to? Ryan, you want to RPS Dead Repair, Baltimore, Maryland. What's David, up, guys? He down here. What's up? <laughs> All right, guys. I'm Chris Dennis Touch, Washington, D.C. So I want to thank everyone for joining us on this show. Uh, I think we have a great topic today. Me and Christian discussed this about two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And it's about uh, basically switching from hail chasing to a retail retail shop. Um, Christian, do you want to tell the audience a little bit about you know your background and how long you've been in the industry? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I have been doing dents uh, for almost sixteen years. Uh, started in uh, two thousand three. Uh, I live in Michigan right now, but originally. Uh, came from Florida. I uh, lived in the uh, Broward County area and, um, you know, started out just uh, working for, uh, actually, uh, we'll go a little bit further back, how I got into the whole mobile uh, reconditioning uh, business is I, I started working for uh, Colors on Parade way back in the day, uh, in, wow. back in like 97, 98. Wow. Um, Colors yeah, on Parade. Colors on Parade, <laughs> yeah. Wow. Doing, doing bumper repair. Had a friend of mine that was uh, – you know, bought a franchise and things were getting busier. So he, uh, he asked me if I wanted to come and work with him. And so fast forward a couple of years, um, a, another friend was working for a local PDR guy at the time and was looking for somebody who could offer the, the bumper repair and touch up service to his existing customer base. So I started working for him. And then, um, you know, as things went, you know, he asked me if I would be interested in learning how to do PDR and uh, so that way I could fill in, you know, if he ever needed me to do stuff at some of the dealerships. And I said, yeah, absolutely. Um, I had, I had kind of known about it from Colors on Parade because at that time they, they had a few guys that were doing PDR. So I, I would see the guys on the same lots doing PDR and I was always interested in it. And um, so, you know, that's, that's how I initially got <laughs> to learning paintless dent repair. And then, you know, it's, it's been a, it's been a fun ride. I mean, the last 15 years, I mean, I've, I've done just about every aspect of, uh, of this business that there is. I mean, I, I did the, the dealer body shop route. Um, you know, I, I've done, you know, I worked for enterprise rental car doing some of their, you know, their bigger crazy dents. And then, um, you know, basically the topic of today's conversation about five, six years ago, um, decided to get into chasing hail. And, uh, mm-hmm. that, that was, uh, that was an exciting, you know, time just getting to travel all around and see all the different, you know, places. And, uh, and now I'm, I'm, you know, where I'm at now with, uh, with the retail shop. Nice. Nice. So normally we go over some tools and you were talking about some tools, uh, before we jumped on. So let's, let's go over, uh, the tools, for the first few minutes before we really get into um, kind of your transition into a retail shop. All right. Dave, you want to start off? Yeah. You look surprised. Brought, uh, <laughs> huh? No, I'm, I'm actually looking at Christian's Instagram right now. Um, oh, okay. I'm looking at all this stuff. I'm like, damn, family? Okay. <laughs> uh, but I have the Ultra Dent uh, Tools pick set. Mm, okay. Oh, that's uh, that's a great day. set. Love this set. Uh, and this is the longer version. I do have a shorter version as well. Is that um, new, Dave? I've had them. I just don't use them as often as I think um, I thought I was going to. But they're definitely nice for aluminum. Um, this is what I'm yeah. using for aluminum hoods. Um, when I really need to crank on something. 
Love these tools. Any flex? Stout, very, very stout. No flex. No flex whatsoever. Super, super sharp tip, if you can see that. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, nice handle. The handle feels great when you're cranking on it. I don't feel like this is going to slip in any way. It's going to um, move in any way. These handles are really, really nice. Um, so, yeah, ultra pick set. Definitely highly recommend it. Yeah, those are, those are great tools. And uh, I don't know if you guys are aware, but I, I know Woody Koss from uh, Dead on Dent Tools actually sells a set of rubber grips that go over those that are supposed oh, okay. to be really, uh, really comfy too. So you yeah. might want to check those out. Yeah, definitely. I love, right. Yeah. I love this set. Love this. I only have two. I think there's a couple more sizes, but I love this set. Yeah. I have the same set and I use them. I use them constantly. Nice. Time to order. Time that's the problem. That's the problem with this show is we all <laughs> it makes you spend money. <laughs> oh, it's terrible. It's terrible. <laughs> It's fine. Uh, Ryan, uh, Dave, you got anything else? That's all I got. I got those two, uh, two tools. Nice. I got nothing. I'm on vacation, so I got uh, <laughs> I've got people. We're, we're over here what? working, and Ryan's on vacation. What's behind you? Life is good, something. What, what, what is that behind you? At your Life beach house. Life is good at the beach. Life there is good go. at the beach. How about that? There you <laughs> go. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> all right. Cool, cool. Uh, Christian, you said you had a few you wanted to go over. Yeah, I uh, I was just telling the guys that uh, you know I, I don't know why it took me so long to get this set of tools, but um, you know I, I've used them several times over the years. You know, being on the hail trail, but the uh, the Mark uh, Zerkus rods, um, uh, fantastic. Jeez. I mean, definitely not something for you know for the new guys, but definitely you know something that will help you out on on those sharper dents. You know, stuff that's you know, maybe got a little stretch to it and you need something real, real sharp to, you know, to gather up that metal. Um, and surprisingly, you know, even just for regular hail dents, you know, you would think mm -hmm. that going at a, a dent with, with a sharp tip, you know, would be kind of crazy, but you'd be surprised at how, how quickly and how cleanly you can, you can fix a regular hail dent with, with those sharp tools. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, I would say definitely, I know it's probably late, late to the game, but if, if you're like me and you haven't, you know, purchase that set, I would, I would really look into it. And I mean, for the five tools, it's only like $380. So, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. you know, it's, yeah. it's a fairly inexpensive set, you know, for what you're yeah. getting. Yeah. yeah. I use that set every day, something out of that set every day. Yeah. So a lot of aluminum, that stuff works amazing on aluminum. I actually just sh sharpened mine. I've had mine for a couple of years and the tips were kind of getting a little, not as sharp as they were, so we sharpened them at the shop. And yeah, that's a good idea. I mean, I I know right now with mine being new, I mean they're super sharp. I yeah. mean, if you happen to poke yourself with one, I mean it'll it'll cut you. Oh wow! Yeah, they're mm. awesome tools. Awesome. Cool. cool. Sounds good. <clears throat> I don't have anything for today. There's no excuse, but all my tools are at the shop right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. All right, so let's get into the uh, the main. Hold on, where's my mouse here? The main topic, um, and it's basically how you transition from uh, hail. Actually, I think go over how was it chasing hail. What are some of the uh, the things you like and things that you dislike about chasing hail? Okay, um, I mean to be honest with you, I. I really enjoy hail repair. I mean, I know that some guys cannot stand it. Some guys, you couldn't pay them enough to do hail because of the monotony or the whatever. But I happen to be one of those guys that I, I really enjoy it, you know. And I would say one of the best things about it is just being able to come to the shop. You know that you have a car to work on. You throw your headphones on and you just – you just go to town, you know, and I mean, I, I'm a big audiobook guy, so I listen to a lot of audiobooks, you know, in between music. Um, so just trying to better myself, you know, that I had a lot of time to, to be able to do that. Um, but yeah, just basically the, the, the ability to just be able to work and, and zone, zone in on, on what I was doing. Um, I mean, obviously, one of the other perks about doing hail is you get to see a lot of the country that you might not yeah. normally get to see. Um, yeah, I like that part, yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, you don't always end up in a, 
a cool town, you know, I mean, sometimes you end up in a small little nowhere place, but, you know, usually within a a short drive from there, you know, you always have your, you know, your bigger city. So, you know, just being able to go and explore like on the weekends, you know, when you're not pushing dense, you know, you get to do a little sightseeing and it's, uh, it's really neat. Right. Nice. Yeah. I can imagine. So is, is, yeah. is that the only thing you like? Just the peace and quiet, it seems like? Yeah, man. I tell you what, <laughs> since, since, since getting here, not to jump too far ahead, but, you know, with the, the retail shop just getting really busy right now, I mean, it's, you know, you just, you're dealing constantly with the phone calls and the, and the text messages, and, and then you're trying to push dents at the same time. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, when you're, when you're on the road and you have, you know, you can, you can pretty much just turn your phone off if, you know, if you don't want to talk to anybody and you just listen to music and, and zone out like nobody bothers you, you know, as long as you get your stuff done, you're, you know, you're golden. Now, right. did you team up with a guy on the road or was it just you? No, actually, I had a, had a partner pretty much from the start. Um, a real good friend of mine. Uh, I don't know. He might be watching right now. Uh, Hans carry on um, him, him and I, you know, we partnered up and um, you know, I, I enjoyed that part of it just because, you know, him and I, we, we got along really well. So in addition to being a good work partner, you know, when you, when you spend so much time with the same person all the time for months and months out of the year, I mean, it, it definitely helps to have a good, you know, partner that, you know, is, is on your same level, not only work wise, but, you know, just, you know, work ethic and just somebody cool that you can, that you can hang out with because you end up going to dinner a lot, you're going to lunch, you know, on the weekends, maybe you're going to watch a movie or something, or you're going to play golf. So, you know, you, you spend a lot of time with that person. So, you know, it's, it's important to pick somebody that you get along really well with, you know? How mm-hmm. are, uh, how are you making these connections on the trail? Did he, were you just kind of just traveling around and um, to, di- to different locations saying, Hey, this is what we do. Or did you have connections in these spots already that you guys had made? Um, it's like, um, hey, we have some cars come on down or were you just kind of going in blind? A, a little <laughs> bit of both, man, honestly. Okay. Um, you know, luckily, um, when I started working with Hans, he had already been chasing hail for, for okay. quite a few years. So he already had a pretty good network of guys, but cool. you know, the, the, the cool thing is that when you do go to a new storm, you know, typically you're working with new guys that you've never met. And because you guys are working next to each other every day, you typically start to build, you know, friendships with the guys. And then, right. you know, as long as, you know, you do good work, usually everybody sort of exchange exchanges phone numbers. And then, you know, when you know call that, me if you need anything, yeah, yeah, call me if you need anything or, or you get to know like, okay, the, you know, he lives in this area or he has connections in this area. So maybe when you, you know, you're watching eye damage or you hear something about a, a storm in a particular area, you're like, Oh, Hey, you know what? I remember so-and-so yeah. lives there or mm-hmm. is from there. You know, let me call him or let me shoot him a text. And then next thing you know, it's like, Oh yeah, we got, you know, we got this dealership or body shop, you know, come on down. And just, over the years, your, your network of guys just, just builds and builds and builds. And, you know, before you know it, you, you know, you usually always got a spot to go to every year. Nice. Nice. So basically you ran with Hans for how many years? Uh, let's see. I would say almost six years, five, okay. five, almost six years. Yeah. And then uh, last year was like my, my last year really of doing hail. It was kind of like a partial season. Um, you know, I, I went, went down to uh, Alabama, uh, Birmingham, and I, I did some work with, uh, with Ryan Hampton. And then uh, okay. after that, went up to uh, Rockford and did some work with, uh, with Densmart, which was, uh, which was a great experience. I, I really enjoyed working with those guys. And then this year, man, for the first time in, in almost, you know, six years is the first time that I have actually not left to go on the road. And it, uh, it, it feels strange, you know, when, you, when you're so used to that, you know, that season starting around March, April. And then, you know, you just know that you're going to be gone and on the road till about August, September. And now, you know, I mean, we're, you know, middle of July and I, I'm still home. It just, it feels, it kind of feels weird, but in a good way. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> well, that's good. Hold on, just get my notes here. So let's talk about some of the negatives of chasing hell. What did you not like about chasing hell? All right. Well, um, and I was going to say too. I I know Chris. I mentioned that that my wife might be uh, interested in in coming on the show. Um, I was going to 
you know, have her, you know, get her perspective. But, um, you know, I, I think I can, I can kind of speak for her when, you know, I would say as far as the negative, I mean, you know, from, from my wife, I would say, you know, her being home and having to deal with, you know, with the kids and just the everyday kind of responsibility of, of raising a family and having me not be there, um, can be, can be really <clears throat> tricky. You know what I mean? Like, and, and as a dad, you feel like you're having to parent long distance, you know, over the phone. Um, you know, it can be, can be tough. You know, I've got, um, I got two boys, you know, one's 13, one's 10. And so for the majority of, you know, up until now, you know, the majority of their growing up, like I was always gone, you know, right. on the road for, for most of the summer, you know? And so that's, that's tough. You know, you, you, you miss out on a lot of things. I mean, my wife was really great about, um, you know, if, if they were playing sports, you know, <clears throat> games, you know, she would, you know, video and, and do certain things like that. So at least I got to experience those things. And, and one of the, the things that I really tried to do my best at was any important um, events that were happening at home. I always tried to make sure that I came home for those. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So that's, that's something I highly recommend for, you know, for guys, you know, you know, those, those moments, especially if you have kids, I mean, they don't, you know, they're not kids forever, you know what I mean? And, and you just don't want to be regretting that. So even though it sucks that you're, you're on the road and you're, and you're missing out at least yeah. if, if at all possible, you know, make it home for the birthdays and, and the, you know, the graduations or whatever, because, you know, you don't want to regret not having that. Of course. Right. Yeah, it's a um, double-edged sword. You know, you yeah. feel obligated to stay on the road and go make the money or, you know, you feel obligated to come home and be part of these events too. Absolutely. But, you know, one of the things that, that I, I heard <clears throat> constantly from guys and, and something that just really stuck with me is that you, you can never lose focus of, of why you're doing what you're doing. I mean, obviously, we're men and we're out there. We're earning a living for our family. But at the end of the day, if, if you neglect them and you're not there for them, you know, what are you yeah. what are you really doing it for? You know, exactly. Right. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So, no. yeah, I mean, I would say as far as negatives, you know, that was a big thing. And I mean, just just overall, um, you know, just, just being away, you know, like you, you, you feel like you, you have a part-time family life, you know, because you're, you're, you're gone for so many months out of the year. Um, you know, even just friendships, you know, having friendships, like you feel like most of your friends are all long distance friends, you know, or you, you only really talk to them on the phone or text message because, you know, you know, people that are at home, you don't get to see them because you're gone. And then when you do, you know, they, you're kind of out of sight, out of mind. So yeah. maybe they don't really think to call you or invite you to go places. So you, you're always in this sort of like limbo mm -hmm. thing with your friends and it's, it's rough. Now, have, have you dealt with a lot of brokers? Have you had any problems on any of the brokers? I know that's, I see all the time guys are having broker issues. You know what? <clears throat> I, I can honestly say, and, and I mean, I, I count myself thankful that I, I never really had any situations where I, I had any problems with that. I, I think an important part of, of that is just being, being careful who you decide to go and work for, maybe doing a little bit of due diligence, you know, talking to different guys, um, you know, and, and the importance of building that network of guys, you know, and, and, mm -hmm. and just knowing that you're going to work for somebody who's reputable, who, who has a history of, of paying the guys on time, you know, things like that really help you out, you know, and not getting into a situation where you're going to, you're going to not get paid for your work. Of course. Of course. Yeah. I hear some horror stories out there. Oh yeah. I, I can't even imagine. I mean, I've, I've heard guys, you know, that have, have been owed, you know, 50, 60, $70,000 and, and haven't gotten mm -hmm. paid. I mean, I can't even, I can't even fathom that, you know, you work so hard, you're away from your family. Um, and then to just not get paid and, and just, sorry, you know, you're not yeah. getting your money. It's like, that would be devastating. Yeah. yeah. Sure. So it seems like it's a double edged sword. You know, you get, you, uh, you get the freedom, but you're away from your family. Yeah. For that freedom. So. Yeah. I mean, you know, again, I, I know a lot of guys probably enjoy doing the hail, but I, I, I imagine that a lot of them, are doing it just because they know they can earn a, a good living. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's not an ideal way to make a living, you know, because you're, you know, again, you're, you're always traveling. You're always on the move, on the go. You're living out of but a you hotel. Would say, you would say it's not ideal for someone who does have a family. 
So someone yeah, like myself, single, no kids. Absolutely. You know, it's kind of, you know, why not go and do it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if, if you're you a single guy or maybe you just, you know, it's, you, know, you have a girlfriend or, or just, you know, your wife and you have no, yeah. no kids. I mean, I, I think it would be, I think it would be fantastic. You know I mean? To be able to travel the country and, right. and just see different places. But the minute you have, you know, kids involved, man, it really, it really yeah. changes the dynamic of that. Wow. Wow. I'll tell you, I met a, yeah. a tail guy a couple, probably, probably 10 years ago. His name is Mike and didn't own a house, had a wife and a young kid. And they traveled the country in this tour bus. It was like okay. a rock star tour bus. <laughs> and he homes, homeschooled his kid. And he, he said it was the best thing ever. I mean, he, sure. was, he just loved it, you know. So it's got its perks, that's for sure. Yeah. And I mean, it, again, it's, you know, depending on your, you know, who you are and, 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 you know, what, you know, your lifestyle. I mean, it definitely, it definitely works for some people, but for other people, it's, it's tough. But, yeah. you know, when, you know, if you live in an area, perhaps that, you know, building a retail business or something is, is tough. Um, you know, chasing hail is the only way that you can make a, a decent living, you know, in this business. I mean, you just, you have to do what you have to do. And, um, I mean, I'm thankful that I have, you know, my wife at the time, you know, being that when I was on the road, I mean, she, she held it down, you know, and I mean, she was supportive and she understood that, you know, uh, we're doing this because it's a way to make money. And it's a way to support our family. And, and so definitely having the right partner, uh, wife, you know, yeah. is definitely very important because otherwise, I mean, it can be very, very stressful. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's hard when you're, when you're trying to work and you're trying to concentrate. And then if you've got things that are going on at home, I mean, your, your head is in a, in, a, in a different place. It's hard to be productive, you know. So it's great mm -hmm. when you have a wife that can just hold it down and you just, you just focus on pushing and making money. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, so the tra good. so like the transition, I guess to bring it full circle, you then mm -hmm. said, "I'm not going to do hail anymore," or next right. year I'm doing this. Yeah, and then you're just I'm going to build a route again, or I mean. So so here's here's basically you know I'll tell you what happened like for even even you know living in Florida, um, you know living in Broward County was uh was tough i mean it's it's a it's a tough market down there i mean you know there's a lot of there's a lot of dent companies down there and there's a lot of great technicians you know don't get me wrong i mean there's there's a lot of good technicians down in 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 the south florida market um you know but it is it is very saturated so what was happening is that the the, the reason why i ended up chasing hail was because i was having a hard time as a mobile business trying to you know, trying to establish myself, you know, because there was so much competition, yeah. everybody's mm -hmm. undercutting each other. So I saw Hale as a way to support my family with my wife not working at the time. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, but then we decided for family reasons to make the move here to Michigan uh, to be closer to my wife's mom and stepdad. And, you know, I'll be honest, the original plan was just to kind of keep, keep doing what I was doing. I was going to chase Hale in the summertime and then in the wintertime, you know, just do what I could to do some retail work, you know, here and there. Yeah. And, you know, but in the back of my mind, you know, my, my goal was always, I wanted to have a retail shop, you know, and, and that's because I, I do specialize in doing bigger damage. Oh, yeah. And I was looking at your Instagram. You do so. I mean, for a hail guy, you do some heavy stuff. Like, yeah. Well, and, and part of that was because before Instagram. I got into doing hail, you know, I was doing a lot of that stuff, you know, especially yeah. working for enterprise rental car. I would say cool. that was where I really got into doing some gnarly yeah, some damage. Complex, yeah. Like, complex, oh yeah. Like, yeah. So, you know, that's always been a passion of mine doing the bigger, the bigger stuff. But again, I, I got into doing hail because it was a way to make money. Right. But in my mind, I was always like, wow, you know, I, I always would, I would love to have a retail shop where I can do these larger dents and I'm not, <clears throat> you know, sitting in somebody's driveway or, yeah. or in their yes. office parking lot with the stuff everywhere, tools all over the ground. And so, you know, what really, what really sealed the deal for me on getting a retail shop was the first winter that I was here. Man, let me, let me tell you. Midwest man, winter. Oh, it was brutal. I mean, there were days where I would literally just call the customer and say, oh, I'm, I'm sure. sorry, I can't come because it's 20 degrees outside and you don't have a garage and I'm not, I'm not doing this in your, in your driveway. Yeah. Yep. And so I said to myself, you know what, if, if I'm going to continue here and I'm going to do retail, I need to have 
a shop. And so I, I began the search looking for a shop and, and trying to find a location. And um, one day we, my wife and I were going through car wash and uh, happened to look over and there was this, you know, kind of a, you know, plaza there with, you know, some automotive built uh, businesses that were already in there and uh, happened to see a few that were, were, were vacant at the time. And uh, so the following day I, I got some information about, you know, who, who owns the place, the landlord and um, you know, and that was kind of how it all started. Nice. Now, did you set all this up before you moved or you moved and then said, okay, now I'm going to go and do this. Now yeah. Yeah. So I, I, we moved here and like I said, my, my original goal was just to, just to keep chasing hail because I, right. I, I was already kind of frustrated a little bit from, you know, moving from an area where there was so much competition. And every year that I would come back from being on the road, I would try well, to comfortable with chasing get things. You know how the process yeah, goes. exactly. You know who you exactly. can call yeah. and how to go and get to a store quick or something. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, I don't care who you are. You could be, you could be a super motivated, you know, entrepreneur, but, you know, from just time and time again of trying to build something and then, you know, come March, April, and you realize like, man, I don't have enough to, to pay my bills off of what I got going on. I have to go chase hail. And then all that momentum that you built up up until that point, when you leave gone. and you're gone for five, six months, guess what? Gone. All those body shops, maybe that dealership that you picked up, they got to call somebody else. So you're, you know, you're back to square one. By the time you come back in September, you may have one or two that kind of stayed loyal to you. But for the most mm -hmm. part, everybody's using somebody else and now guess what now you got to start all over again and yeah. after five or six years of trying to do that man it just gets frustrating where you're like you know what forget right. it i'm just gonna i'll just stay doing hail it's the um, same thing that happened to ian land oh he i know ian. Ian. Yeah, yeah he's a great guy yeah same thing happened yeah. with him he was he was traveling and coming back and forth and you know now is this on the trail so Ian and I actually, uh, I, I worked for Dent Wizard for a brief period of time, you know, down in Florida. And uh, uh, right, right around that time, Ian was, uh, was also working for them. And uh, that's where I got to meet him. And we've, you know, we've stayed in contact um, oh, yeah. over the years. Yeah, yeah he's, he's a he good dude. Good. Yeah. Yeah. So, you got so go, ahead. go ahead. No, so, so you, uh, you've tried this a few times. And then what made you, what made you kind of... Uh, kind of get it right this time or kind of pursue it, I guess, uh, further this time kind of didn't give up, I guess. So, you know, I, I had never, I had never tried to open a, a retail shop in the past. It was always, you know, because I lived in Florida, you know, the, the weather there is pretty good all year round. You could be mobile and you, you could be fine. Um, but moving here, I, I realized pretty quickly that, you know, if I was going to do, strictly retail or, or try to focus my business on retail that I, I would need a shop. And, and, you know, originally it started out where I, I, I thought, well, maybe I could just get the shop for the winter time, you know, and if I could find something right. that was reasonably priced, you know, I could just have it as a backup, you know, and, and still do mobile retail. But then mm -hmm. if the weather was bad or if it was cold, still have a spot, yeah. um, I could just tell them, Hey, well, I have a shop, you know, why don't you meet me over there? And so that was honestly, that was the original sort of plan for the shop. But I, I think what really helped out was that I picked a really great location um, and just having the traffic from the car wash and then having the other automotive businesses that were in the same plaza, That's it just right every, right. everything oh, just okay. kind of fell into place. And, you know, I, I guess I lucked out too, because where I'm at right now, it's a, we're, I'm in the Metro Detroit area. So basically the suburbs of Detroit, I'm uh, I'm about 20 miles north of downtown Detroit, um, and so yeah, you've you've heard the the or you, know, you watch the movie Eight Mile. So yeah. Michigan is you know <laughs> the Metro Detroit area is broken down into miles, and it goes right. from the center of Detroit. You know, so I'm on, I'm off a of 23 mile, so kind of gives you I'm a 23 miles north of of Detroit. Nice. Um, but this is a car area. I mean, you've got all the you've got the big three here. I mean. The, the car Motor club City. scene City, yeah. is, is here. I mean, there's car shows happening. But the thing is, there's just not, there's not a lot of dent guys in this area. I mean, there's, you know, there's, a, there's a good handful, but not so many as there were in Florida where I was from, you know? 
Got to keep so, your secrets, Chris. You got to keep your secrets. Yeah, you got to <laughs> <Pandora's box. laughs> you, you deal. You got to deal with the sub-zero temperatures. So I think that probably has a lot to do with it. Man. But um, I, and so I, I just I feel like maybe maybe everything just kind of aligned for me. You know, after after all the years of of just banging my head against the wall, I feel like everything just sort of fell into place and and uh, you know and just started working. So what actually That's fell cool. in? in place what what did you actually pursue I, we got a question here uh i guess what, what did you pursue first when you knew you were going to open up and what kind of aligned into your favor to make you kind of go this is it this is the time to do it well um you know again i i think you know just just picking you know especially when it comes to a retail location you know picking a location that you know has a lot of exposure is key um you know, I know a lot of guys talk about, you know, well, you know, if you could find a place that's, you know, maybe a little bit off the beaten path, um, you know, you, you could do okay as long as your marketing is good. But I, I feel like to really be successful with a, with a retail shop, you, you have to have, you know, some drive-by traffic where people are, you know, you're, you have exposure, you know, so people can, can see you, um, you know, and, and just, again, I, I think part of it, part of what made me successful here is, is my ability to, you know, to do the stuff that other guys were turning down, um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, doing quality repairs, you know, where, you know, the, the repairs were, were clean, you know, yeah. because again, up here, guys have cars that they take to car shows. I mean, they want everything to be, you know, really, really nice. So, you know, being able to deliver that quality repair, um, really helped me to stand out from, you know, from a lot of the, the people yeah. in the area that, you know, that they were used to using, I suppose. Um, you know, I, I guess I'm trying to really think of like, was there something that, mm -hmm. that I did? And, and I mean, I, I really, I really don't, I can't think of anything. I mean, I, I think honestly, it just, it just fell into place, but I think just the, the consistency of, of delivering a, a, a good quality repair. I mean, that, that just spreads, you know, and all of a sudden I was getting referrals from, from people that I had done work for and it just slowly kind of snowballed from there, you know, they were like ambassadors for your company at that point. Correct. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. The, the word of mouth is more powerful than any marketing you can do. Yeah. Um, but you know, and then obviously having a good online presence. I mean, I, I've worked really hard on, um, you know, having a, a decent website, um, of you know, the social media is, is huge. Um, I, you know, Instagram, Facebook, uh, you know, those, those avenues have really, really helped me here. Um, yeah. you know, just hashtagging certain things. I mean, I get a lot of work from, you know, from people just looking at my, my Instagram page or my Facebook page, um, and just being, I guess, amazed by, the repairs are like, Oh my God, I can't believe, you know, yeah. how, did, how did you do that? You know? And yeah. so they want to use you. They, you know, you're the guy like, Oh, well, if you can fix that, well then I've got this dent. That's like no big deal. So yeah. I think definitely yeah. being able to showcase your work and, and really <laughs> focusing on, on, on having a good, you know, internet presence and social media, um, yeah. you know, especially here in an area where not a lot of guys were really doing that, you know, I mean, there's a few guys that are doing some things on, you know, online, but, but when you really, put a lot of it out there and you, you dominate, you know, you, you become that, that person that people want to, you know, use. Mm -hmm. And exactly. when you're working with these other businesses, are you, are your cards are in their shops and their cards are in your shops type thing. And, and Hey, this is, um, you know, this is who we use for our, our debt removal or, you know, cause you have the, you said it's in the plaza. Oh so yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Your, your information's in these shops and yep. everyone nearby. Yep. And, yeah. So I would um, definitely recommend huge. that. I mean, if, you know, if you open up a retail shop and you're, you know, you're in close proximity to some other businesses, I would definitely network with those guys because it's, yeah. it's a huge uh, avenue. I mean, I have a window tent guy. I have a, a, an accessories place just down, down nice. from me. And I mean, we're, we're constantly, I have a detail guy that's in the building just behind me. So we, we always are referring people to each other. And I mean, it's, it, it works. Nice. Cause I'm me and Chris nice. always go over this. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and I, I say my biggest thing or what I think the biggest drawback is with the shop is trying to get the customer to come to you. Yes. And yeah. That's the hardest part. Whereas, you know, we're mobile. We're able to go wherever. We just need the vehicle. Home, work. 
So sure. how do you, I mean, you're just drawing in these customers through social, through word of mouth. Yeah. Um, are you doing it like any events and stuff like that? Or I'm, I'm actually just um, going to be doing my first car show um, nice. at the end of this month on the 28th. I, I take care of a Subaru dealership and okay. uh, they have a, an annual car show that uh, attracts a pretty large crowd. So they, they asked me if I'd be interested in, in being a part of it. So I, I accepted. And so um, I'm excited. It's going to be my first uh, car show. I mean, I've, I've, you know, I've been to car shows and, you know, usually I'll wear my shirt or something like that, but I've never actually set up at one. So this will be my first deal. Um, and so that's, uh, that's really exciting. But to get, get back to your, um, your, your point there, you know, that was one of my concerns with opening the shop was, Am I going to lose? Yeah. Am I going to lose customers because I'm not mobile? And you know, and Chris and I kind of talked about it. We we chatted on the phone about this earlier today. Um, I mean, definitely for our target customer, you know, busy people, you know, but they want to get their cars taken care of. I mean, having a mobile service is definitely a bonus, a plus. But I also feel like, for the most part, I mean, unless people know about paintless dent repair or mobile paintless dent repair, they still associate us with a, a body shop, you know, like a repair yes. shop. So people are used to bringing their car to a shop and getting it repaired at a shop. So I feel like if you can convey the fact that you can do a better job on their car at your shop, you know, for certain types of damage, like again, I, yes. I do, I do bigger, larger damage. Yeah, so I see, yeah. You know, doing stuff like that, you know, in somebody's driveway. Yeah. yeah. You know, for me to be able to work on it in my shop, you know, uh, climate controlled, you know, I have lighting, I have access to tools that I may not be able to bring with me. I can do a better quality job. And you know what? People, people understand that. And, 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 you know, I, I really haven't had any issues with customers saying, oh man, I was really hoping that you're a mobile. So I guess I'm going to have to call somebody else. You know, it's, it's really not been an issue. I've actually tried that on four or five calls today after we got off the phone, Christian, um, about, you know, our target customers. And uh, one guy, I just quickly just said the exact same thing. Um, you know, we do the larger damage and, you know, unfortunately we can't, we can't do mobile based on, you know, just different, uh, you know, requirements that we need to be in our shop with right. the R&Is and all that stuff. And he was quick to say, no problem. I'll figure out a way to get it to you. Uh, let me schedule from this appointment. So I don't know. I I I, don't, I mean, I think we were going back and forth with the mobile and our customer base and stuff like that. But it seems like I don't get much resistance. I mean, if if ideally, test. ideally, and I, and I I still do uh, a couple days a week mobile service, but I, 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 I that. Go ahead. yeah. So I mean, I don't do mobile retail, but I I have a couple of dealerships okay. and a few body shops that I take care of two days a week. So Mondays and Wednesdays are my are my mobile uh, mobile days, and then I'm at the shop, you know, uh, every other day of the week. Um, you know, so I, I think that especially starting out, if you know guys are going to be transitioning from a, a mobile uh, service to to a shop, I would definitely um, you know set some days up, you know, during the week that you could still do mobile, so that if you do have a customer that is kind of like, ah, oh, man, you know, I, I just, I just can't bring my car to your shop, you know, and you, you think that you might lose that customer by <clears throat> offering the mobile service, you know, a couple days a week, you might be able to still, you know, take care of them. And then, you know, you just decide as your business gets busier, whether, you know, you cut it back to, to two days a week mobile or one day a week mobile until ev eventually maybe you're just a hundred percent at the shop, you know, you can, you can sort of feel that out. Is the is the shop closed when you're not there, or is there a, a staff or a work, you know, an employee there? You know, That's a great question. Yeah, I I'm I'm at the right now. Um, when I'm not at the shop, I basically have a sign in the window that says, you know, we're out on a mobile uh, mobile service call, um, and then I have my number on there. You know, say you know, text or call. Um, but I I have thought more so over the last few weeks um, about you know, would it make sense to have somebody there at least? Maybe just on those two days. Exactly. Something. Yeah. Um, you know, and just, you know, even actually when I'm at the shop, because um, I was talking about this with, uh, with Chris earlier today too, you know, when I'm there, I typically, my shop is, is booked by appointment. So I'll usually know when I get to work that day or to the shop, like I have, you know, these appointments that are coming in. 
So, and I have everything blocked off by, by time, but when you're in the back and you're, you're working and then your phone is ringing and then I hear the chime <laughs> where somebody's yeah, coming in the, the door. door. Now I got to stop. I got to walk outside. I got to yeah, you know, it's, do it's the rough. estimate. And then sometimes I'll have customers that are sitting in the waiting room and they're waiting. And so it's like, what do you do? Like, do you, do you tell the person that's coming in the door for an estimate? Like, ah, oh, man, I can't help you right now. Cause I got this person's car in the back and they're sitting here right. waiting. It's, it's tough, you know, and, yeah. and you know, you, you don't want, you don't want to make somebody upset because, you know, they feel like, oh man, I'm sitting here waiting. My car's supposed to be worked on, and this guy keeps going in and out of the door, right. you know, mm -hmm. to go give estimates to to new people. So it's getting to that point where I I think that it, you know, within the next you know little while in the near future, you know, yeah. I may have to get somebody at least to help me with the administrative side of the the business, like the yeah. front end, which yeah. will allow me to be more productive in the back. <laughs> oh yeah, it'll right. probably alleviate so much. Um, and it'll be small, tedious things too. Like me and Ryan are kind of going through that now um, with our first employees here. And, but it's alleviating a lot of little minute tasks that, you know, eat up your day. Have to do. Yeah, it is huge, huge help. So that, let's, uh, let's, let's answer a quick question real quick. Right. Um, George just says, uh, which company and what kind of insurance do you need to do mobile dent repair? I use Erie. It's a garage insurance. Yes. Uh, I think that's what he's asking. Uh, I know yes. Progressive does one. They're pretty. They're higher than Erie. But uh, who do you use? Uh, um, I, I use a local. I use a local insurance company here. Uh, it's called Frankenmuth. Frankenmuth okay. Insurance, and they uh, they take care of my my general liability. Um, okay. One thing is that you know when you when you have a retail shop. Um, you do need to carry a uh, garage keepers insurance, which is a, mm -hmm. it's a different, uh, add on insurance. Um, and that covers the vehicle while it's in your shop, uh, especially if maybe the car is going to be there overnight. Um, mm -hmm. it, it also covers you if you have to drive the vehicle, you know, transportation, if something happens mm -hmm. while it's on the road. So it is, you know, you do, uh, when you have a shop, you know, you're going to pay some additional, uh, insurance, but it's, okay. you know, it, it's not, it's not a huge difference. You know I mean? It, it's. You know, it's extra, but it's not that much. Yeah. I noticed when I, at least for the state of Maryland, when you hire one person, I think Virginia is three, you have to, you have to cover a uh, worker's comp. And that's, okay. that's a decent expense, to be honest yeah. with you. So. Certainly for Maryland. Maryland is. Yeah. Maryland is like, as soon as you hire your next employee, it's worker's comp. Yeah. So, and then the audits, I'm going through an audit now, which is, I think, done. But oh, it's so stressful. It's like oh, for the, for the workers' comp. And then the workers' comp audit yeah. is like it's every oh, three years crazy. in Maryland. Every three years you're gonna get audited for <laughs> workers' comp. Crazy. So yeah, or you pay twenty five percent markup. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess I guess the whole idea behind that is they they just want to make sure that whatever you're you're reporting, at least I know for here, like whatever you're reporting that you're generating an income is what exactly. they what they cover you for. So if if, right. if that changes, they want to know so they can. Charge of more. <laughs> of course. So, of course. Right, I kind of want to get like your perspective. Um, so this is your first time having like a retail location, right? Or yeah. Your yep. Location. Yeah. So you find the spot, you sign the paperwork, <laughs> here's your keys. Like what's next? Like you're sitting in your shop and you're looking at it like, okay, what do I do now? Like, how did that process go yeah. uh, for you? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it, it definitely wasn't like, you know, just, you know, open the doors and, and here we go. We got, we got customers, you know, I mean, it was actually the first, you know, the first few months, uh, was actually pretty scary. And I, I kind yeah, of, of I had some, I had some second thoughts like, man, what did I, you know, was this, was this a smart decision? Did you um, open in like spring or summer or was it uh, winter? We opened, we opened in April. <laughs> Uh, okay, April, um, you know, cause, uh, yeah, it was April of 2017. Uh, I mean, I had, I had come off of a pretty good, uh, pretty good hail season. Um, so I had, you know, I had some money put away and Knowing that, that you were going to make a move like this too. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and so that really helped. And I would definitely, I would definitely recommend that to, you know, to any guys that are listening or, or, or watching <clears throat> that, you know, are considering opening up a retail shop. I mean, definitely, uh, want to have some money set aside because, you know, just even opening up the shop on its own. I mean, you know, there's, there's things that you wouldn't think about. Like if you know, you've never had a shop before. Yeah. I mean, you've, you've got all your, you know, your licensing, you've got to set up, you know, with the city, 
um, yeah. you know, just yeah. setting up the shop in itself, you know, Perfect. buying furniture, um, putting up a sign, you know, I mean, you know, just different, you know, a, a front podium for your, for your waiting room, a computer, you know, there's just all these expenses that, you know, you don't think about, but you, you, you got to have them, you know, and you're still trying to get customers in and brand exactly. yourself and trying to make money while, you're, while it's going out the yeah. door as well. Yeah. yeah so, I mean, to go back to your, 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 your question, um, you know, I mean, again, you know, my, my original idea for the shop, you know, it, it kind of, it kind of morphed over time, but it, it was originally just a, a place where I was going to just have customers meet me when, when, when I needed them to. But after I, I, got into the shop and I, I realized the potential based on the location. I, I thought to myself, you know what, I, I think that I can really make a go of this. And so what I really started focusing on was um, I did a lot of AdWords um, that really helped me in the beginning. Um, I just, I put a lot of money into, into AdWords and just, you know, pumped that up quite a bit. Um, again, with, with, um, you know, Instagram, Facebook, you know, just um, doing ads on there too. Um, I would say, uh, out of any marketing that I've done so far for the shop, you know, those three things have been key. I mean, you know, your, yeah. your, um, your Google AdWords, you know, Instagram marketing and Facebook, uh, were huge, um, in, in just bringing people in the, in the door. Um, and it sounds like you've got the right location though. you you had yeah. the right perfect yep. storm almost. Absolutely. Uh, not a lot of that guys, you are doing the more extreme repairs. Um, and then I think when we talk, there's just not, not a lot of retail, uh, guys, as soon as you ping a Google map of dent repair and there's no one within 30 miles or 25 miles, I mean, you're, you're in a good position. Yeah. Uh, where so you're at right that, now. I just, I you know, again, I, and I, I was, like I was saying before, like, I just feel like everything just sort of <laughs> just kind of fell into place for me, you know? So I, I, I'm, I'm really grateful for that because I, I, you know, been doing this for so many years and, and just getting to the point where I was so frustrated of, of, you know, what was going on and, and then to finally feel like all those years of, of doing what I was doing kind of culminated into, you know, everything just falling into place and, and really working out, um, you know, so I'm, I'm really, I'm really grateful for, for just how everything is, has, has fallen into place for me. So now, did you do, did you do like a grand opening? Just to try to get some buzz. No, I, you know, I, I, I had plans of doing that, and um, you know, it just, it just never, it never came around, and, and I, working, I do, I do working, have a little bit working. of a regret for that. You know, I, I think that that would have been cool. I mean, my wife and I talked about, you know, doing the whole, you know, get a grill and just, you know, just Big grill up some hot dogs really and some burgers, <laughs> and, and just, you know, just have people come by. Um, but just, it just never, never worked out that way. I mean, but I, I don't think that it it hurt us necessarily, you know, I mean, um, you know, so it, it, it would have been cool. I mean, I, I, yeah. I feel like if, if somebody were to open up yeah. a shop, I definitely do think that, you know, putting on some kind of a grand opening event, you know, maybe put it out on, on social media, um, you know, anything that you can do to get people in the door, just, just to come by and, and see the place and, and know where you are, um, mm -hmm. is, is very helpful. And how long yeah. has the shop been open? Uh, we opened in March, uh, March of 17. So, um, just a little year, over, a little over a year now. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. and funny story, actually, uh, the shop that I'm in right now is not the one that I, that I started out and I started <laughs> out next door just because <laughs> that one happened to be the one that was available at the mm -hmm. time. But I, I always wanted the one where, where I'm at now currently, which is, uh, which is a corner unit. I'll say it looks and like it's on the corner. It's on the corner. Yeah. And, and if you ever read any like marketing books or whatever, yes. you know, they always talk about your end caps. So I don't know if it's yep. called end caps or whatever, but that's where people's attention focuses. When they look at a building, their, yep. their attention usually hits the corners first. And that's why places like Starbucks and things like that, they always, you always see them on the, on the corners. Very rarely do you ever see them in the middle of the building. So, mm -hmm. you know, just a little, little tip there if you know if you're mm -hmm. looking at a location if possible you know try to get something that's on on the end because you know people's eye naturally draws them to the to the end unit and so yeah. um, it just so happened to work out that um a few months later uh the landlord because i had said to her i said hey i'm going to take this unit because i want to be here I, this is the perfect location for me however i would love to be on the end so if the let you know if the tenant that's there 
ever decides to not renew, please let me know. And I would like to take that over. And sure enough, like um, we got in there March and then first of August, uh, we moved into the, to the end unit. And so now that's our, our permanent location. Cool. Nice. Nice. So for any guys that are on the edge that are chasing hell and thinking about uh, doing retail, Mm -hmm. uh, is there any kind of guidance you can kind of give them or tips or yeah, what they should do like a plan of attack, you know? I mean, I would definitely say from the financial perspective, I mean, you, you definitely, you definitely want to have some money set aside, you know, at least, you know, figure out, you know, your monthly bills. And I would, I would say at least have three to six months of, of bills set aside. If your plan is to just jump right into doing, you know, retail or a fixed location, because I'm here to tell you, even with a great location and, and being able to fix the kind of stuff that I fix, it's, it's not a guarantee that you're just going to have customers walking in the door. You know, if, right. if, you, if you have a mobile retail business right now or a mobile wholesale slash retail and you're transitioning into a, a fixed location, that's a little bit easier. But when you're coming off the hail trail and you want to set up a, a fixed location, mm-hmm. it's going to take time. And so, so, so point number one, definitely have money set aside for your bills, but you also need money to set aside for, for marketing and advertising because you're going to want to hit that real hard right off the bat and even you know, what uh, even fixing the shop up <laughs> i'm looking at you yeah. epoxying the floor here I'm like, yeah yeah i mean that that was fifteen hundred dollars right there bam yeah. um yeah. the lettering on the lettering on the windows was another eight or nine hundred dollars yeah. um mm-hmm. so i mean it's you know you figure right off the bat you got four or five grand just in you know expenses and that you know mm-hmm. the shop when i moved in was was fully renovated well, not renovated but the landlord had painted the, they put new tile down so there you may you may move into a shop where it's it's a disaster so now oh, you've yeah. got to you've got to make your shop look presentable, presentable. you know yeah. um so how much is that going to cost you got to factor that in um yeah, definitely and then um i would say secondly most important is you know, when you're doing retail, you, you know, your quality definitely, your quality has to be there as far as your repairs. But I would say one of the, the things that's really helped me out has been my ability to fix larger complex damage. And that's a big proponent of retail. You know, mm-hmm. people are going to bring their door dings. They're going to bring their, their small stuff, but you are going to struggle big time if you don't have the ability to fix larger damage. So if you're a hail guy and you're used to doing hail and, and, you know, maybe you don't feel comfortable on bigger damage, you know, I would definitely get some training, you know, um, talk to some of the guys, you know, on online, you know, that offer some more of like the advanced training because um, that's, what's really going to set you apart. And, you know, when, when you're opening up a retail location and you're, you're depending on people to come to your shop, you don't want to be turning away work. You want to capture right. as much of that work as you can. So if your skill level is not up to par and you're having to turn away work, mm-hmm. you're hurting yourself. So we're going to wrap it up and kind of open up the, uh, the questions. I'm pretty sure a lot of the guys in the chat have some questions for you. But, you know, with you being uh, pretty much in business or a uh, brick and mortar built uh, shop for the last, I don't know, a little bit over a year, mm-hmm. do you think uh, you'll go back into hell or are you kind of liking the way the retail shop is running and, and, and going to grow from there? Oh, yeah. Grow, no, at this point with, with as busy as the shop has been and, and just, you know, the fact that I've become established here now, um, I mean, just short of everything, just completely falling apart. Uh, I just, I don't see, I don't see myself <laughs> getting back on the road. Yeah. And I mean, this is, this is ultimately where I wanted to be, you know I mean? I, I, I enjoy the hail, don't get me wrong. And I, I enjoy doing a, a hail car here and there that, that I've done at my shop. But, you know, ultimately this was where, this was where I saw myself. And, and now I've, I feel like I've achieved that. And so, you know, I'm, I'm in a good, I'm in a good place now. I was trying to cool. train the boys to get them so they can run the shop for you. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, my, my son, my older one, um, you know, he, he, he's, you know, kind of expresses a little bit of interest. So we'll, we'll yeah. see how that goes over the next couple of years. Uh, it could be, it could be something that, um, you know, 
we could uh, we could of bring course. him in at least part time. Maybe do some R and I stuff for me, and then uh, see how he does with a tool in his hand. <laughs> and you said that yeah, your yeah. wife works there, so does she write estimates? Is she just like a yeah, so, person? Yeah. So my wife actually was a um, she was a service writer for BMW, and that's actually how nice. we met. And um, so nice. right in the beginning, she actually <laughs> uh, was was helping me at the shop, and and it was actually great. I mean, she's she's excellent with customers. She's great, um, you know, with she estimates. Actually, yeah, she, she she's better. Background. She's better than me at estimates. <laughs> I, I made more money when she was at the shop writing estimates. Cause I'm too nice. I, I have a tendency of giving my work away, and I gotta yeah. stop that. But she's yeah, uh, she's she's great. So I mean, unfortunately, her her well, not unfortunately, but you know, her business that she has uh, her own business, and that has taken off uh, as well. So she's uh, not been able to help me as much at the shop anymore. Uh, yeah. which is uh which is a bummer <laughs> good good so I'm trying to it, it, guys if you have any questions for christian and, and how he uh transitioned to a retail shop please feel free to put in the chat menu uh, right now before we wrap this up I'm trying to see if there's any shops right now oh uh, jonathan says do you sell any products at your shop no not at the moment um, it was an idea that I had, um, you know, when I initially opened up the shop. Um, but, uh, you know, for right now, I, it's just primarily just the, the, the PDR. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry, Ryan, go ahead. Where were you originally trained? Um, I, um, I worked for a, a company uh, way back in the day. Um, it was called uh, Dent Works of Palm Beach. Um, the guy who trained me, John Book, um, I, don't if, I don't know if he's still around, um, but that's that's where I learned. I mean, it was uh, nights and weekends, uh, you know, in his garage working on working on a hood, and then eventually transitioned to being able to help him out at the dealerships with uh, you know just the minor stuff, and then it just uh, kind of evolved from there. So you know, I, I, cool. I kind of was like on on the job training with a with a local, you know, PDR guy. That's cool. So David has a question. Um, it says. What is one of your favorite newest tools that impress you the most? Boy, that's a tough question. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a tool guy and, and uh, you know, I, I love the fact that our industry has gotten to the point where it's at, where, you know, these tools are coming out and, and, you know, I mean, it's just making our job so much easier. Um, I would say, probably one of my favorite tools at the moment um just based on the fact that i do comp you know more complicated larger damage um mm -hmm. you know the 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 stuff from from sal Contreras. i mean the the dent dials yeah. yeah. uh, have been a, a huge thing for me um yeah. i uh, several months ago I, I i even got the uh, the slot bar for glue pulling and that has been uh i, mean, I know people use the name the word game changer but uh, for me doing bigger dents and, and stuff like that. I mean, being able to, to have that controlled pull with, uh, with that slot bar is, um, you know, it, it's, it makes a big difference. So I, I'm, I'm grateful to him for sharing his, you know, his, his tools and, and his techniques. I mean, because it's, it's changed my business. Yeah. Yeah. There's some stout tools. I, uh, yeah. I had a 22 heavy duty. I think me and Ryan both bought mm -hmm. an MTV yeah. and, yeah, that thing's in the cart every day now. Yeah. <laughs> so so I've another... stepped on a lot of challenger doors lately within the past couple of weeks. Oh, yeah, I'm those things are winning. Oh, I'm, 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 in, I'm, in, I'm, in, uh, I'm in challenger challenger. <laughs> yeah, you are. You really are. Oh, you my really gosh. Are, <laughs> and, and going back to, you know, just, you know, speaking, speaking to, to Sal Contreras, I mean, the, the tip that he shared uh, for, the, for the challenger quarter panels has – yeah. has helped me out big time just you Which, know being able to use the the dent dial and bend it into almost like a u shape and then yeah, yeah. use that to come up and under you yeah. know under that, oh, that brace, brace. Yeah, yeah i mean that's that's big you know i mean i've done probably 7 to 10 challenger nasty quarter yeah. panel dents like that and and using that technique has been great yep so we have another question is, uh, how many spots do you have for cars in your shop and do you want more or less than you currently have? So right now I have, I have a thousand square foot shop. Um, I mean the, the, you know, the actual work workshop 
uh, space. Um, and it's, it's, it's a long shop if you can imagine like long and narrow. So I can fit, uh, I can fit two cars in the shop comfortably, you know, uh, front to back, uh, with enough space to, to work around. Um, you know, for right now with it just being me at the shop, you know, it's, it's definitely, uh, more than, more than what I need. Uh, if I'm working on a project car or something that's a little more time consuming or a hail car, I'll usually pull that up to the front of the shop. And then I'll leave the, uh, the back space for, you know, a quick estimate or, a, you know, just a quick door ding. So it, it works. But, uh, yeah, eventually I would love to have, um, you know, a shop that has some, some more space, maybe a, a designated um, estimating area. Because uh, one of the things that I found that really helps me to get um, higher estimates um, is being able to pull the car into the shop, put a light on it, mark off your damage um, you know, and not do it out in the parking lot with the sun yeah. and you're just kind of guessing, mm -hmm. you know, trust me, pulling it into the shop, marking it off, even writing that, you know, like Paul Corden says, write, write your, your stuff on the, on the panel, show the customer, this is why I'm coming up with this number. And you'll be surprised, you know, so many customers, <laughs> when I have that light on the damage, they're like, Oh yeah. my gosh, wow. Yeah. That light really shows yeah. the damage. And I mean, they can see like, wow, it's not just this you know, right. small dent that they thought it's, it's so much larger. So just being able to have a space where I could pull a car in and not disrupt the cars that are already in the shop being worked on would be, would be great. But that's, you know, you know, I, I consider the shop that I'm in now a starter shop yep. and, uh, you know, kind of testing it out, seeing how things go and then eventually maybe moving into something a little bit bigger. Nice. Nice. Uh, let me see if there's any other questions. Doesn't, oh, okay. Uh, Straight lines asked. That how do you get rolling on customers? Is that the same one you were going to? Or? Yeah. How do you get like How do you get rolling on customers and advertising? I think you went over that, and that was uh, your AdWords. Just, and just your your AdWords and your you know your social media social. you know advertising. Um, cool. I think is big, but you know. What did you initially that? spend? What did you initially spend on getting that up and running? Um, I would say in the beginning. We were probably spending between five and eight hundred dollars a month on on AdWords, yeah. um, and okay. then probably another three to four hundred on you know between Instagram and and you know Facebook. Facebook. And the nice thing about those is that you can you can turn them on and off when you you know mm -hmm. when you need them. You know you're you're not really bound to any kind of contract. Yeah. So when when you feel like the the calls are a little slow, you can you can throw on a, a few ads and then you know, get the phone ringing again and then you can shut it off. So that's, that's what I really like about it is that you have that flexibility. Do you yeah. use Yelp? You know, I, I don't, um, okay. they, they keep calling me to try to get me to set up stuff, but I, I just, I don't I really, do it. it. Yeah. And, and I've talked to a few guys that have said the same thing. So I'm, you know, I kind of left a bitter taste in my mouth about them and, you know, even, even their whole review thing, I, I kind of, I'm, I'm upset about that because so I have on. I have great reviews from customers that don't show up because of their, their policy. They're not Yelpers. It's, yeah. <laughs> but not everybody is a Yelper. So, I mean, exactly. how, how do you expect somebody to, to get to that point if, you, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. It's a, it's a frustration of mine. But the, the, <laughs> the Google thing has been working it. great. Yeah. So, <laughs> I can't Google complain with that. That's yeah. a whole nother show for me. So, let's oh, not yeah. even get into that. Yeah. So. <laughs> All right, I think that's it on the questions. Um, I think we're going to call it a wrap. It's ten oh four. Christian, I definitely appreciate. Yeah, man, thank you guys for having me on the show. I appreciate it. Um, and sharing your story on how uh, how you kind of developed your uh, retail shop, I think it's very impressive, actually. Thank you. Um, I think we talk from time to time, and I've always it's always a pleasure <laughs> hearing the new stuff yeah. that you're getting into. So. We'll definitely um, try to make it to MTE. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I, 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 it's like I said, you know, we talked about earlier before the show. I mean, it's you know, it's it's something I, I love going to. I mean, I, I just you know because I'm such a tool guy, I love to see what's what's new. Um, but being in Michigan now, I'm a little further away, so it makes it a little more difficult to get there. But uh, they make that little I, thing. It's got two jets on the side. You just yeah, yeah. That, that kind of kind of takes you there. <laughs> you know, I, I'm definitely uh, you know I'm. I'm I'm planning on it if I, if I can. Cool. Nice. nice. All right. Uh, Christian, where can they find you again? 
Um, so again, you know, um, you know, we we're on we're on uh, Facebook, uh, Instagram, uh, Twitter. I you know I'm on there, but I'm not real active with it. But uh, you know, if you just look Twitter. us up under Five Star Dent Removal, uh, website is Five Star Dent Removal dot com. And uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I really appreciate you guys uh, having me on the show. Hopefully, I've been able to help. You know, maybe some of the guys that are, you know, considering opening up a shop. I mean, it's it's definitely rewarding. Um, and I mean, if it's, if it's something that you've, you've had as a dream, I mean, I would, I would definitely say pursue it, you know, but just, you know, just think about, yeah, I have, you know, have realistic expectations. It's not, uh, it's not as easy and as glamorous as it, as it may seem, but you know, it, it can be, you know, the rewards are there. It's just, it's just going to take time, time and, and, and persistence, you know, so do, do you think, Owning a retail or running a retail shop is harder than actually chasing hail or vice versa. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, again, you know, chasing hail, I mean, yeah, there, there's, there's, I'm not going to say it's easy. I mean, there's, there's definitely some challenges to that, but you know, when you, when you have a retail shop and and you're just dealing with so many different things that are, that are going on, um, you know, from a business perspective, I mean, it's, it's very hard. And then again, you know, if you've not had experience with, with running one before and you're, you're brand new to it, it's scary because yeah. you're dumping all this money into something that you don't really know for sure. Is it going to work out? You know, hoping and, you're making the best decisions. and hoping you make it. And, and, yeah. and, you know, so that just having that in your, in your mind all the time and just hoping that, you know, you're doing the right thing, you're making the right decisions, you're spending the money in, in the right areas and that it's all going to, work its way to, to, to making something successful. I mean, it's, it's way harder. Um, but again, it's, you know, nothing in life, you know, that's easy is, is worthwhile. So you've, you just gotta, you just gotta push Mm -hmm. through and, and, and not, you know, failure is not an option, you know? Yes. I'm with you. I'm with you. Yep. All right. Uh, Dave, Brian, thank you so. Thank you guys. guys. Uh, Wrap it up. Have a good night. Dave Windy City Dent Repair, uh, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. Ryan, Ryan. RPS Dent Repair, all the same stuff. <laughs> YouTube, <laughs> Facebook. Chris, Dennis Touch. Thank you, Christian, as well. All right. Yeah, you're welcome, guys. Thank you. Chris, Chris Dennis Touch, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, MySpace, Black Planet. <laughs> YouTube Chris, <laughs> guys, the famous YouTube Chris here. YouTube Chris. Yeah. All right, All right guys. guys. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you next All week. Right.